good morning everybody welcome back to my channel i'm your girl tali this is lemon lady please welcome um i know that you guys are worried about me honestly i'm worried about myself as well uh excuse my tired sleepy face it's early in the morning and i'm here at hyundai uh place to change my tires for winter tires and also my car got a recall for the ABS, so I'm here to get that um, changed. And anyways, since I'm here waiting in line, I thought I would stop for a minute to talk to you guys about basically uh, what's going on so far. So I left my car over there to get some service done. And by the way, when I say my car, it's not my car, it's my employer's car, but anyways, um, so I just wanted to basically talk a little bit more about what's going on with my health situation. Um, I told you guys in my last video that my doctors are divided in their opinions. So my surgeon believes that I am in metastasis and I need to do um, a surgery in the breast to remove the breast and then a surgery in the armpit at the same time to remove the lymph nodes. And then also do another surgery in my abdomen so they can remove this part of the liver and the lymph nodes in my abdomen that he believes are also contaminated with the cancer cells. Um, and as for my oncologist, they believe that I only need the, um, the surgery in the breast and armpit and nothing related with the abdomen. So I just want to clarify why the team is divided in their opinions. Um, I didn't read all the comments yet, I didn't have the time yet, guys, I'm sorry about it, but I will read and respond to all of you as I always do in a bit. Um, but I, I saw kind of briefly that people were asking why has the diagnosis kind of changed now, what's going on? So in my previous exams, they had found these points in my bone, in my liver, and in my abdomen, okay? So just to clarify better to you, uh, since that time, in all other exams that I've done, CT scans, MRIs, and all of that, they have still, uh, they're still seeing the lesion in my bone, in my vertebra. So I had a lesion in the L5 and the L8. Now they are not seeing anything else in the L8, so I can't even explain to you guys what exactly they were seeing because I don't even know, to be honest with you. But in the L5, it's nothing cancerigenous. So nobody's worried about it. Nobody's mentioning anything about it. I had a car accident a couple of years ago in 2014 and it was a very bad accident. I was on the highway and a car hit me from the back. Uh, the person lost his glasses for some reason, I don't know how, but the glasses fell on the floor and the person bent over like this to look for the glasses on the floor. And while he did that, he lost vision of the highway and he obviously didn't see me in front of him. So he smacked my car, uh, the car was totaled and during the impact, my car seat broke, so I didn't have any structure holding my back, and that's why I got a lesion in the L5. Well, that's what we all assumed, because at that time, I was working as an au pair in the US, and uh, I was really concerned about using health insurance, and I didn't really go to the doctor, believe it or not. It was crazy, I was in a lot of pain for a couple of days, but I decided to just kind of heal by myself. I didn't get it checked. And anyways, I believe that this lesion that they see nowadays is regard, regarding to this accident. So right now, nobody's talking about my, my bones anymore. However, when it comes to my liver and my abdomen, there are lesions, there are masses in both of them. So uh, that's why they were thinking about metastasis. And then basically what happened was they told me that in the other exams I did, the masses were decreasing and there was nothing to worry about because they said if, if it was cancer, the things would like kind of light up during the exam and nothing lighted up. So my oncologist told me that, you know, we ruled out, we ruled out um, the possibility of you having metastasis, don't worry about it. And I thought, okay, that's great. So you guys saw me celebrating and I was happy about it. And I just pretty much stopped thinking and worrying about this, right? But, sorry, I'm back, guys. Um, 
I got a ride, an Uber ride from the dealership back home. Now, continuing the story. Um, so my oncologist, they believe that what was seen before in my previous exams shows like, yeah, there is a lesion and in both um, liver and the lymph nodes. But according to the exams, because the things didn't light up uh, during the last exams, they don't think it's cancer. Uh, in fact, the note of the exam said that the lymph nodes in my abdomen are probably something like genetic, something that I probably just was born with. Like I just, I was just born with enlarged lymph nodes, a bit bigger than the normal. And as for the liver, it basically shows that, yeah, you have a mess in there. There is something going on, but it's not cancer. We don't know what it is, but our priority is to treat your cancer. We'll figure that out later on. It's nothing uh, too serious, probably. So I'm bringing this up to you guys because I believe that I wasn't very clear in my last videos. Uh, I was very overwhelmed because just like most of you, I wasn't expecting to, to, to hear this at this point, especially because chemo is working and all of that. Uh, but the situation is that, um, all the masses are decreasing with chemo, all the masses, including uh, the lymph nodes in my abdomen, they have decreased in size, and also the mass in my liver has decreased in size. So because of that, and because of that only, my surgeon is sure that all these masses are from the same invasive ductal carcinoma that I got in my breast primarily, and then now it's just spreading and therefore because it's all the same type of cancer and I'm doing chemo and they're all decreasing. That means that, you know, they're all basically from the same cancer family and it is a metastasis and blah, blah, blah. Now, as for my oncologists, they think that, no, um, I do have an issue in my liver, but it's not cancer. So they don't want to open me up in half again, just like when I did my my previous cancer surgery, um, they don't open me up to do a proper biopsy and see what's going on. So it's a serious matter. Uh, this could change the course of my treatment. I'm going to do my mastectomy. I'm going to remove my breast regardless, and as well as the lymph nodes in my armpit. But the question mark now is, are they also going to do a surgery in my abdomen to check my liver and my lymph nodes in the abdomen? Um, if it is stage four cancer, then of course, um, treatment is different because the disease is not curable. It's just a bit treatable, but not curable. And then I would basically do chemo until the last of my days for what I understood, just to try to decrease the masses and help them not to spread more. Um, but if, it, if I am stage two or three, um, as we are believing so far, then, you know, hopefully um, at, a, at some point I'll be done with chemo. So anyways, the doctors are meeting on Wednesday. Mind you that this is the second time that they are discussing my case. This has happened before in the past. Uh, so they are doing this again to see what's going on. And... I'm just anxious about it, to be very honest with you. I don't want to worry too much. I'm Christian. I believe in God. I know God has a plan for me. And, you know, he's amazing. And I know he He basically has a plan for me. And I trust him. I really do. But I'm also a human being. And I'm made of fears and worries and concerns. And this has made me not sleep too well the past nights. I've been feeling a bit tired also because of all the diarrhea and vomiting going on. This weekend, um, by the way, a little parenthesis here. Uh, this weekend I started a new medication, which is magnesium. So uh, because I've been having so much diarrhea and vomiting, my magnesium level is low. So my doctor prescribed me three liters of magnesium. <laughs> I was actually shocked because when I went to the drugstore, I was expecting to get some pills, you know, maybe one, two boxes of pills to just take orally along with my other meds. And when I saw those gallons, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what is this? Um, so yeah, I'm taking 90 mLs 
actually 30 ml three times a day uh, of this magnesium liquid. And um, I also need to take iron because I don't think I've ever mentioned here. Hi, Maggie. You want to say hi, mama? Say hello, everybody. Here, show your face. Say good morning, people. Are you still sleepy? I think you are. So anyways, um, I was saying, I don't think I've ever told you guys, but I have thalassemic anemia and I also are on deficiency. <laughs> Meg's face is funny. Um, which is funny because when I was back home in Brazil, all my life, I was told I had uh, sickle cell anemia. But once I started treating cancer, my oncologist said, no, you have thalassemic anemia. So basically, I spent my whole life, over 30 years, believing I had one thing and I had the other. Anyways, uh, the point is that I need um, iron, extra iron, because also I did a bypass surgery a couple of years ago to reduce my weight. And that's also a topic for another video here. I've been through a lot, guys, honestly. There are a lot of things um, I've been through health-wise that I haven't told you guys yet. Uh, but anyways, I do need some extra iron because, especially after the bypass surgery, it doesn't matter how much broccoli I eat, I'm never going to get enough uh, iron for my body. So I need to get the infusions through my veins and and have that complement every year, which is something I haven't done here in Canada because I wasn't having access to the healthcare system for a long time due to my immigration issues. And then anyways, now that I'm able to, so now uh, I'm waiting for them to book me in for the sessions for me to get these iron infusions. And that's what's going on. And then um, due to this magnesium medication now, um, I actually vomited quite a lot on the weekend, so it was actually terrible. I didn't have the chance. I was kind of laying down on my bed, and I didn't even have the chance to turn to the side fully. Um, I didn't get the chance to run to the bathroom or to even sit down. I started vomiting a lot, and it went all over the carpet, part of my bed, my own hand and arm. It was <sighs> terrible because, you know... Um, I'm going through this pretty much by myself. Yes, I have emotional support, but when it comes to life happening physically here, I don't have help, right? So every time I vomit or anything like this happens, I'm, I'm the one who has to clean up after. <sighs> so that was annoying, but um, other than feeling tired, uh, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling more hopeful. I think that in my last video, I was really just like shocked with the news and I was, as I told you guys, upset, but now I'm just being hopeful. It's not the end until it's the end. I'm still a fighter, a warrior, and I'm going to pass through whatever I have to pass through. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. I'm trying to keep my mindset positive as it has been all the time, I'm trying to keep my mind and my hands occupied doing stuff around the house and all of that so I don't have much free time to think bullshit as well. And that's about it. I'm a bit anxious to see what's going to happen after Wednesday because, again, um, the doctors are meeting up on Wednesday to discuss my case. So my oncologist said he's going to give me a call um, after that meeting. I don't think it's going to happen right, right after. He said he would call me within probably a week. So I'm going to have to be patient and wait for that. You know, God has been treating my anxiety a lot during this journey because there are a lot of things I wish I could change and do, but you have to wait, you know? So, yeah, it's part of the process. And anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit better about this story, what's going on, because I'm not sure if I actually explained this well. But just recapping... Um, I do have something going on in the lymph nodes in my abdomen and also in my liver. And we can't really biopsy these places properly because uh, it would be tough for you to stick a needle in there in these tiny, tiny lymph nodes that are fluctuating in my abdomen. So I would have to go for surgery. And therefore now uh, my doctors are trying to 
just align their thoughts because the oncologists think I'm not stage four, it's not metastasis, while the surgeon believe it's all part of the same cancer. That's why all of them are responding to chemo. Yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, please keep me in your prayers. I hope that in my next videos I come up with better news. Fingers crossed. And let's see what God has in storage for me. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had, you have a blessed day. And I'll talk to you soon again. Bye. Say bye, Maggie. Meow, meow.